Hello, uh, my name is Emily Ward. I am an undergraduate. My major is chemistry, my minor is homeland security. Um, we have, uh, I haven't presented anything in a long time, so uh, I'm a little nervous, just bear with me, please. Um, this uh, project, we just started up mid-January, um, specifically to bring this information and present it here. Um, the, uh, my instructor is uh, Dr. Dryko. Uh, this is under the Department of uh, Chemistry and Physics. Um, we're investigating thermal electric power of sulfide materials. Uh, the purpose of this uh, research is to investigate thermal electric power um, of selected sulfide rocks uh, like iron copper pyrites and stuff. Uh, it's a very abundant mineral and um, in July of 2014 uh, some of these natural minerals were discovered to have very good thermal electric properties. Uh, our objective is to find minerals that will generate the largest potential difference when used in a thermal couple pair. And uh, these are images of um, a synthesized mineral, synthesized rock that we've put together, and this is a scanning electron microscope image of it. Just, you know, it's a picture of a rock. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. The thermal electric power has to be measured, and that is done using the CBEC coefficient, uh, coefficient uh, something called the CBEC effect, which is converting temperature difference into current. The larger the S, the better. Uh, this measurement is gauged by um, the efficiency coefficient, ZT. Thermoelectric efficiency is a figure of merit that depends on temperature, how large the CBEC coefficient is, and electrical and thermal conductivities. Um, at the completion of this research, um, we will hopefully have two materials that we can put into a thermoelectric device. So let's take a look at uh, the CBEC coefficient really quick. It's, um, it's a measurement of the magnitude of induce, induced voltage in response to a temperature difference across a material, um, which is essentially if you heat up one side of the material, how much thermal energy and how much energy goes to the other side of the material. Um, the entropy per unit charge carried by electrical currents through the material, and uh, thermal conductivity determined by a material's temperature, crystal structure, and impurities. And uh, we measure it in a thermal couple circuit, and the unit is volts per kelvin. For our beginning uh, process, we just wanted to see if we could find something that would conduct uh, a mineral that would do the, the electric conducting. So we um, did a very primitive experiment where we just mounted, uh, we cut out a uniform piece of a natural ore and uh, we mounted the sample uh, to a thermal couple data log. And we got, a, we got a reading, which is a good thing. Um, we set the raw material just above a hot surface. <coughs> it's just a, a little rock we put just above a hot plate. And we uh, measured the increase in electrical conductivity as it got hotter. And we tested the conductivity in DC voltage, and we measured a rudimentary CBEC coefficient. We observed a uh, rudimentary CBEC coefficient. Uh, then, we decided to get a little more technical. That's what we do. Um, we have this tetrahedra right here. It is um, a composition of copper, antimony, antimony and uh, sulfur. Uh, we threw the raw materials 
in and mixed it up and uh, uh, synthesized it in a furnace, in a rocking furnace, melted it all down. And then we, uh, we took the synthetic rock and we ground it and we uh, put it in a vacuum gas chamber. It says Arlen gas, it's actually a vacuum chamber. And then we melted it um, and let it kneel at 650 degrees. Um, in order to get a better measurement, we had to fabricate a thermal couple to measure our rock that we made. Um, this is the thermal couple that uh, Dr. Graco made because he's really cool like that. He could just make instruments. And it's amazing. Um, this is the, uh, the leads that uh, are attached to a rock. It is sitting in the middle of this uh, plate in here and uh, has um, positive and negative and silver and uh, ther <laughs> has thermal measuring devices attached, wires attached to it. <laughs> um, and then we connect it to a data logger and we'll put this end on a hot plate and that will have a more steady heat flux instead of just letting it float above a hot plate. And here we have uh, what our little, what our natural rock looked like, um, and a measured seabed coefficient. Um, there is a difference in uh, temperature uh, here is what we measured it by, and um, it's increasing in voltage as it heats up, and that's what we want. Um, this is our synthetic rock, uh, and it, you know, it, uh, it, it tested a conductivity. It just didn't have the same magnitude. The difference is in the, the magnitude, and, and of course the, the direction, but the magnitude here for our synthetic rock goes uh, from 0.1 to 0.10 to 0.12. Um, temperature increase. But here, the potential is a order of magnitude difference. But then Mother Nature made this rock, and uh, that's why it performs better than something we made. Um, successful completion of measuring this Quebec coefficient with the ore natural rock will uh, lay the groundwork for further alterations of the material, and it will lead to the expansion of the thermal couple realm. Uh, essentially, this is a means by which to conduct electricity generated from thermal heat without a big machine to do so. It does it naturally. If we can find the materials uh, that will, and combine them together, we can place them on something that's generating heat and conduct electricity through that, by that heat, through that material into a working form of electricity. So, um, future work is a synthesis of high quality tetrahedrites. Um, you know, probably won't be as good as Mother Nature's, but something that'll work very well. <laughs> And uh, natural samples, we have to do this because natural samples are very small and they're difficult uh, to cut out large uniform samples of it. And um, you know, if we can make it, we can control its uh, placement and uh, structure better. I'd like to thank uh, the Department of Physical Earth and Earth Sciences, uh, Dr. Scranco and Dr. Gregg.